<laughs> Speaking of taking a stand against bullies, Arizona Senator Jeff Flake announced he will not seek re-election in a speech where he called out what's wrong, what he feels is wrong, right now in politics. Take a look. Personal attacks, the threats against principles, freedoms and institution, the flagrant disregard for truth and decency, the reckless provocations, most often for the pettiest and most personal reasons, reasons having nothing whatsoever to do with the fortunes of the people that we have been elected to serve. It is often said that children are watching. Well, they are. And what are we going to do about that? Mr. President, I rise today to say enough. So. Is this good? Is this bad? Are, are people waking up? Or what's happening, do you think? Mm. I have so much to say about this, so just stop me when you want me to stop. We'll stop, stop on this. Okay. <laughs> so, Steve Bannon, this is a big win and success for him because he has said he's out for scalps with establishment Republicans. And this is a big scalp for him because Jeff Flake, my home state of Arizona, my parents are good friends with him. He's a truly decent man. He was an ardent anti-Trumper. He was a never-Trumper. He wrote a book called The Conscience of a Conservative, Barry Goldwater quote, that was all about how he couldn't get behind this sort of Trumpist populism. Mm -hmm. Conservative media is thrilled over this. I saw a lot of things being said last night about how this speech could have been like Nancy Pelosi. And it's just sort of this lens into what's happening in the Republican Party. There's a very, very intense ideological divide about sort of the Reagan-esque people of the past and the Trump populists of the future. It is important to the say- The Bannonites too. The, the Bannon, uh, mm -hmm. and populism, and it's, it's, a, it's sort of a, 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 much, a much different turn in traditional conservative beliefs. Right. It is important to point out Jeff Flake was not popular in Arizona. He had an 18% approval rating. He only won by 3% in 2012. I remember that election well. The candidate that's being put up right now against Jeff Flake is straight out of Steve Bannon's playbook. He actually went down and endorsed her in Arizona and with Laura Ingram and had sort of this big rally about the future of Trumpism. Yeah. And again, tell me when you want me but to stop. Well, let me <laughs> ask you, because d does that mean he didn't run because he couldn't win? Or is he really making that stand, sort of the stand that we saw during the McCarthy era when the senator stood up and said, have you no decency, sir? And then all of a sudden you saw a sea change. Is, you know, what is the distinction well, we there? See, we haven't seen well, Mitch McConnell walk out. Right. In fact, they just said, we're back to our agenda. We need to get these tax cuts so that we have something on the books, that we've done something, and they will just swallow everything that Trump does in order to get their tax cuts now. And That's that, where they're at. But never Trumpers are being hunted right now. And and have no doubt, if you are someone like Jeff Flake, a Ben Sass, even a Paul Ryan. These are never Trumpers these are, in, in your uh, view. Pa Paul Ryan was not a never Trumper, no. but Ben Sass was. He's a sometimes and a I, uh, He's, yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting for me because even on this show, I am the conservative on this show, but I'm not a Trumper populist. I have many issues with him. And there's a, I feel pressure all the time to defend his supporters and to defend him because they are technically part of my tent of the party. But there are things, you, you're sort of put in this position where you have to apologize for things that you're uncomfortable apologizing for. And by the way, for me, I was a Republican while these people were giving money to the DNC and Chuck Schumer. And it's it's a weird place to be where people, Jeff Flake, by the way, has a 93% approval rating with American Conservative Union and a 96% lifetime score with Club for Growth. He's a deeply principled conservative, yeah. but if you don't sort of hedge into populism and but hedge into Trumpism. If, if all of these moderate Republicans, these Reagan he's Republicans. Not he's, he's very Well, the Reagan Republicans then. Well, how, what do you want to call them then? Uh, cool. Just, it, it's, it's non-Trumpers. Yeah, non-Trumpers. Uh, non-Trumpers. Yeah. Non 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 yeah. So if, if all of the non-Trumpers yeah. leave, then the, what you have left are only the Bannon Trumpers, That's the one right? That's the, the problem. Bannon. Okay, the so then what you have is the low-hanging fruit in the party, basically, and then the Democrats, if they can come up with somebody good, can can wipe the floor with them. I'm, no. I'm not completely. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, sorry. Sarah, does well, that not make sense? Necessarily. We've Why seen not? when Bannon backed Roy Moore yep. in, mm -hmm. is it Alabama? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Alabama. Yeah. yeah, that 
man is it, in my Dangerous. my mind despicable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if if we get some of these good ones and they're leaving, and people that but, like you said, you can get behind this guy. I need to emphasize so though that fight the Trump good fight? is fifty percent has, has a huge. He's has an eighty four percent approval rating with Republicans. I am the deep minority. I mean, I am not Trump someone eighty four eighty four percent approval rating with Republicans. Yeah, yes, that's it's true. Hugely yeah. popular. Yeah, and I think that it is a. I don't know if this is a tipping point. People keep asking me if this is a tipping point. I think. I think that Jeff Flake didn't want to, I, again, to say that I know Arizona politics well and what it takes to get elected. My father had a very, very hard race, ended up, by the way, winning very handily against the woman who's trying right. to run against Jeff right. Flake right now, double digits. Yeah. But it makes me Why sad he didn't want to run. And not Flake. Yeah. Why could your father win and I, Jeff Flake? I had hoped Jeff Flake would take this on time. because I think it's an important time to have people like Jeff Flake. But the, right. the campaigning in this time, when you have people like Steve Bannon and you have the president of the United States, this is highly unusual to come out against candidates and attack them and say, you, you're, you're yeah, it's uh, abnormal. Yeah. highly yeah. unusual, highly so historically. Is he, a, is he a hero for what he said, which was, this is abnormal and I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to put my country before my party. Or is he someone I, I who should have stayed put, there. I'm going to put my principles. Yes. The principles before you know, the party. I can't stand but should he it's, have stayed there and fought? So, you know what? Some people, that's not what they do. I don't think that's what he, he has very specific things he felt he was going to be able to do. And he's unable to do them because he is fighting uh, his own party. Uh, and yeah. the rhetoric, and I have to say, I don't know him, I salute him, because I've been waiting for somebody to say, you know what, this, this swamp's too mucky for yeah. me. It's abnormal. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 And on this, and on this. This is a big win for President Trump. It's yeah. a big win for Steve Bannon. It's a big it's win only for a Trumpers. Big, it's only a big oh. win, you guys, if your person gets in. And I think, given all of this stuff, now we've got a lot of smoke. This is a lot of smoke and mirrors. People are not letting you all get away with what happened in Niger. They are paying attention and they want some answers. So it might be a win because you have him moving. You still have to win the next.